So good morning to each and everyone. And congratulations to all those who have won during the raffle draws. Um, okay, let me begin. I have only 30 minutes. I have always, I need to be reminded all the time because I don't have any sense of time. <laughs> so you're all familiar with this. Atomy Philippines, the unique business concept that sets it, apart, sets it apart from any other business. So the absolute price, absolute quality, meaning nothing can be better, nothing can be cheaper. And of course, it's impressive that Atomy is carrying products that cater to our basic daily necessities. Uh, just to remind the group, it has been announced, or one of the things I learned during the last one-day seminar, uh, is that in Korea, there are already 350 Atomy products. In the Philippines, we have only 85. But the ultimate goal of Atomy is to end up with 100,000 different products. All yeah, globally sourced. Yeah, so we're all looking forward to that. When that happens, literally, mamumulot na lang tayo talaga ng pera. So <laughs> we should all feel excited about that. So health supplements, again, this is the very remarkable product concept of Atomy, the mustache. I won't belabor you with this. You're all familiar with this. So for this morning, I'll be focusing on probiotics and lutein. So let's start with lutein. Lutein is the ultimate eye vitamin. It is an antioxidant. It is a carotenoid. Carotenoids are organic pigments produced by plants, and this is what gives the characteristic color that ranges from yellow to orange to red, as found in food substances like carrots, squash, egg yolk, corn, etc. Even green leafy vegetables, they also contain carotenoids, but you don't see the color yellow because of the chlorophyll, which is colored green, which masks the yellow color. But as soon as the chlorophyll wears off and the color green fades out, now you see the color yellow, and that is carotenoid. There are 600 carotenoids found in nature, and out of the 600, there are only three that are found in high concentrations in the eye, particularly your lens, the retina, and the macula. These three carotenoids are lutein, seosanthin, and mesoseosanthin. And of the three, the most important is really lutein. That's why we call it the ultimate eye vitamin. We are all born with plenty of lutein in our eyes. We're born with that. But as we grow older, especially when you hit the age 40, lutein begins to decline. And when you hit 60, it is at its lowest level. The thing is, lutein cannot be produced by our body. So we really have to depend on external sources, meaning diet and supplements, like what we have. So what does a human eye do? It collects optical information from the environment and then transmits this optical information to the brain via the optic nerve. The human eye is like a camera. So as the light enters the eye, the lens focuses that light into the retina, very much like the lens of a camera. At the back of the eye, of the eye is a lining, it goes this way, at the back of the eyeball, that is your retina. So the retina is like the film of a camera. Within that retina, you'll find photoreceptor cells. These are light-sensitive cells that send nerve impulses to the brain via the optic nerve. The optic nerve, if you look at that image of the human eye, you'll see that yellow thing uh, that comes or emanates from the middle portion of the retina. That is your optic nerve that connects directly with the brain. In the brain, these nerve impulses are transformed into images, just like what 
the film is as it is sent out to create photos. And the images formed by the brain, this is what we appreciate as kung anong nakikita natin sa kapaligiran in the form of light. So, yun, the process na, ganon. Now, at the very center of the retina is your macula, at the very center. The macula is the most sensitive part of the retina, and it is responsible for our central vision and color vision. Color vision means our ability to perceive colors, whether it is blue or green or black. And central vision, we have two kinds of vision, central and peripheral. Central is, as I look at you now, that is central vision. My peripheral vision, even if I don't turn my head to the left or to the right, my peripheral vision is telling me what's on my left and what is on my right. So the macula is responsible for the central vision. It is what gives us the details in our vision. So it gives us the ability to be able to read fine print, to distinguish faces, and to drive a car at night. So that's how important the macula is. Together, the lens, the macula, and the retina, they form the very foundation of a healthy eye. So what is macular degeneration? As we grow older, our lens and our macula degenerate. It's part of the aging process. Particularly if you have uncontrolled medical problems, uncontrolled diabetes, for example, hypertension, obesity, all the more that this degeneration process becomes accelerated. As a result of the degeneration, cataract will form in the lens. That cataract, as we all know, it can be operated on. Then intraocular lens implantation can be done, and that will restore your eyesight back. But it's a totally different story with macula. Macula, once it degenerates, it can never be repaired. It can never be restored. That will lead to serious blindness. So for all of you here who may have undergone cataract operation, you still have the macula to take care of. Di pwedeng isipin na, okay na ako kasi meron na akong artificial lens. There is still that macula that you need to take care of. I have a first cousin whose husband is presently undergoing uh, treatment for his macular degeneration. He's being injected with but, but with whatever medicine that costs him 20,000 pesos a month, one injection every month, that, but that cannot even assure him of anything. Because that's macular degeneration. You can't do anything about it. Degeneration can only, hindi, hindi pwedeng sa matanda lang, I mean, hindi sa matanda lang yung degeneration. Degeneration can also occur even among much younger people. And that is because of our eyes, number one enemy, which we cannot see, an enemy which is nearly impossible to avoid as it is everywhere. And that is your high energy velocity rays or what we call as the blue light rays. Blue light may be man-made or may be from natural. Man-made, this is emitted by electronic devices, laptop, cell phone, tablet, all those gadgets, LED lights, fluorescent lights. Natural, sunlight is the biggest source of blue light. That is why on a cloudless sky, if you look up, the sky is colored blue, the oceans are colored blue because of the blue light emitted by the sun. So you have to be very careful about that. So what are the damages that can be caused by blue light? Our eyes can effectively block ultraviolet rays, but never blue light. Unfortunately, our eyes cannot block blue light. So the blue light passes through your lens and reaches deep into the retina and the macula, which are the two vital areas for our clear and sharp vision. And the blue light can always cause 
the generation of the lens and the macula, resulting into cataract even at a young age and macular degeneration even at a young age because of that blue light. So effectively, I mean not effectively, but as an aftermath of prolonged exposure to blue light, those are the alarming complications which you have to be aware of. Macular degeneration, cataract formation, even digital eye strain. Eye strain because the blue light scatters fast and wide. So the lens is unable to focus it. So because the lens cannot focus it, it doesn't provide that sharp contrast. Eventually, it will cause strain on your eyes. Frequent headache, poor sleep. Who are you here are fond of while already lying in bed, still tinkering with their cell phones, with the bedroom lights off, with the cell phone as the only source of light, still doing Facebook or whatever last minute emails. That is very, very risky and that is very dangerous. In the absence of the light from anywhere and the light just coming from your cell phone, all the more that threat to your eyes becomes accelerated even more. So never do that. Very dangerous. Again, it will keep or stimulate you mentally so that you'll find it hard to catch sleep when you're still tinkering with your cell phone while you're about, supposed to be about ready to go to sleep. So these are the leading causes of vision, loss of vision, maybe from physical and environmental factors, as well as the deficiency in lutein, vitamin A, and beta-carotene. Lutein, by the way, is also is really related to beta-carotene and vitamin A. The environmental factors, this refer to your free radicals that lead to oxidative damage. I don't know who among you here were present during my lecture on him him when I made you elaborately discuss about free radicals. You still remember that? Yes, free radicals are what you get from the environment, from the air that you breathe in, from what you eat, from what you drink, and stress. So it can be the ultraviolet light, it can be alcoholism, smoking, eating processed foods, too much protein, too much fat, instant noodles, instant everything, stress. Those are all free radicals and they lead to oxidative damage. And oxidative damage means it will hasten the degeneration of your body. So, bata pa mukhang matanda na, bata pa may arthritis na, bata pa bakit nabatay sa heart attack, and all those. Those are courtesy of oxidative damage. And the way to counter free radicals is through antioxidants. Sila yung magkabanga. Free radicals, antioxidant. Lutein is a very good antioxidant. Hemohim is a very potent antioxidant. So if the, if the free radicals will accelerate the degeneration and the aging of your body, internally and externally, all antioxidants serve to counter that, which means it will try to slow down the aging process, the degeneration process. So as shown in this slide, environmental factors, stress on the eyes due to watching TV and playing games. So this is blue light, which is a kind of free radical. Imbalance, nutrition, so poor diet, smoking, poor free, free radicals. All this can cause loss of vision. So lutein is very vital to a healthy vision. Let's go back to the macula. At the center of the macula is a pigment. That pigment is primarily lutein. The more lutein, the darker or the denser the pigment. The denser the pigment, the more powerful it becomes in absorbing harmful light and therefore giving us better light sensitivity. So that's how it works. And lutein, as shown here, can also filter out ultraviolet rays when you have uh, enough supply of lutein in your lens. Mm -mm. So it will reduce eye fatigue, glare, and light sensitivity. 
it will strengthen the tissues in the eye, prevent macular degeneration, the, of course, as an aftermath because it's able to absorb the harmful light, then it effectively can prevent cataract and macular degeneration. And even for people who already have existing cataract, if you continue to take lutein continuously, that can also lead to an improvement of the vision, even if you already have cataracts, which may, be, which, may have, which may have not been operated on. So why choose atomilutin? We all did serious nutritional support for our eyes, every part of our eye, especially as we age. Remember, at the age of 40, lutein begins to decline. At the age of 60, it's almost gone. So we need serious nutritional support. And the average support, especially in the form of lutein. And the average recommendation is to take 10 milligrams a day. What Atomy is offering us is 20 milligrams a day. So meaning it puts us in an even better situation. And it contains additional uh, ingredients like vitamin A, zinc, berries. These are all very powerful antioxidants. Vitamin A, zinc, berries, they are all very powerful antioxidants. And even additives, like what you see here. So they not only will provide us good eyes, but they are meant to really help us safeguard, strengthen, and nourish every critical part of our eyes. The Atomy Eye Lutein comes from the hand-picked marigold petals from Central Mexico, Aztec, Central Mexico. This type of lutein is very close to its natural fatty ester form. It is closest to the form found in nature. It is more potent and it is easily absorbable. That's why we should feel assured that our lutein comes from the marigold petals of Mexico. These are hand-picked. These are not machine harvested. These are hand-picked. So how do we keep our eyes healthy? Uh, these are basic and important guidelines. I don't have to go through each and every one of these nine. So uh, in closing about lutein, Lutein is recommended for people who are hitting the age 40, especially if you're 60 and above. Uh, it's recommended for people who are compelled by reason of nature of their work to be in front of the computers all the time, who watch a lot of TV, etc. deal with gadgets that continuously emit blue light. For those who cannot avoid that prolonged exposure to blue light, apart from lutein, they're also advised to wear blue shield eyeglasses or PC eyeglasses that is supposed to protect their eyes against the risk of blue light. Generally, that's how we should be recommending lutein. So let's move on to the second part, probiotics. Our probiotic is a special combination of 13 different kinds or strains a probiotic with each sachet, sachet contains 3 billion probiotic. From the VOD or from the video that was shown yesterday, it says that per sachet really contains 20 billion live bacteria. But up until the time it reaches the large intestine, you're assured that it still has 3 billion live and not dead bacteria. The bacteria are stabilized before they are packaged to make sure that they will reach the large intestine alive and not dead. Because it is at the large intestine where the battle is fought. So they have to be alive by the time they reach that part of our intestines. Probiotics are live microorganisms, good for humans because they provide us with certain health benefits. So the, the use of probiotics is essential when you have an imbalance 
of your intestinal flora. The intestinal flora refers to the totality or the community of bacteria, both good and bad, that are in your intestine. Again, let me remind you, each one of us is made up of hundreds of trillions of cells. Of the hundreds of trillions of cells, only 10% are human, 90% are bacteria. So we're only 10% human, we are 90% bacteria. Yes. <laughs> uh, I look like lactobacillus, you look like acidophilus. <laughs> so of the 90% bacteria, 90% of the 90% are, our, are, are in our intestinal tract. Majority, di nga ba sabi ni Dr. David Kim, if you collect all the bacteria in your intestine, they will measure up to 1.5 kilos. Can you imagine that? 1.5 kilos. So itong intestinal flora na to, both good and bad, yun yung ibig sabi ng intestinal flora. And when you take probiotic, you restore the flora balance in favor of the good by fighting the bad bacteria. Think of probiotic as Ghostbuster. It will restrain the bad and support the good. This is your intestinal epithelium. This is the intestinal, this is the lining. You think of your intestines as a tube. tube. Talaga naman tube siya. Sino kumakain ng tripelia? <laughs> Sino kumakain ng goto na may laman loob? <laughs> Di ba? Di ba yung intestine yun? It's a tube. So, may walls. So, yung inner lining, the inner lining of that intestinal wall is your intestinal epithelium. Mm -mm. So, it serves as the gateway or a barrier between our intestine and our bloodstream, our internal organs. And it is structured in such a way that we, it will allow the passage only of the good nutrients that result after we digest properly the food that we eat. It will allow the nutrients to pass through that barrier to end up in the bloodstream, for the bloodstream to distribute it to all the parts of the body to properly nourish us. And it will not allow the passage of hindi nutrients, examples, bacteria, bacterial toxins, antigens, undigested food. It will not allow. It is structured in such a way, in that way. And take note that our intestinal flora are in that intestinal epithelium. It forms part of the intestinal barrier to prevent this, yung pagpasok ng hindi dapat. So very crucial ng role ng ating intestinal barrier. And that intestinal barrier can break down if the bad bacteria predominate over the good. When that intestinal barrier breaks down, now it will allow the passage of all the non undesirable undigested food, bacteria, harmful microorganisms. And what do you think will happen pag nakapasok sa bloodstream natin yung mga ganong undesirable aliens? It will really result into a lot of inflammation, autoimmune diseases. And inflammation is at the root of most diseases. Lahat ng medical words ending in itis, ibig sabihin, may inflammation. Appendicitis, arthritis, pancreatitis, bronchitis, sinusitis. Basta't may itis, ibig sabihin, may inflammation. Yun. Autoimmune diseases, of course, maybe you're familiar with that. Pero these are really alarming complications that can result if your intestinal flora is out of balance, it breaks down the intestinal barrier, then it allows this. I hope you understand that. So, lactobacillus, which is one of the probiotics, it's capable, ano din yan, nandun din sa intestinal epithelium, which is a mucous membrane. Mucous membrane yun eh. So, the lactobacillus can produce lactic acid, therefore making our intestinal environment acidic. Harmful bacteria cannot survive in acidic environment, but the good, healthful bacteria can survive 
in that acidic environment. So an acidic intestinal environment translates to good intestinal health. And our probiotics can effectively deliver this kind of advantage. So generally, these are the functions of probiotics. Sabi ko nga, think of it as Ghostbuster. It will restrain the harmful bacteria. Whom do you call? <laughs> Ghostbuster, mga ganon. At the same time, it will increase the healthful bacteria. And it will help regulate the bowel function. Symbiosis, what do you mean by this? If both the good and the bad bacteria coexist in the same environment, without creating any harmful health side effects, that is what you call a symbiosis. They live and let live. Ganon. Harmoniously, they coexist. But that is only possible if the balance between the two is 80% good bacteria and only 20% should be bad. The moment that bad bacteria outnumbers or tilts this ratio in favor of the bad, that's when all diseases will start. So, unfortunately for people who are getting older, harmful intestinal bacteria increase with age. Among the so many bonuses of getting old, pati harmful bacteria dumadami. Bumababa na nga ang lutein, tumataas naman yung harmful bacteria. What is got this biosis? This is the opposite of symbiosis. Kung mas dumadami ang bad compared to the good, then that results in dysbiosis. As I had explained earlier, with dysbiosis, the intestinal barrier now loses its integrity, it breaks down, and then it allows the passage of all the harmful uh, microorganisms into our bloodstream that now results into, among other things, obesity, inflammatory bowel disease, autoimmune disorders. This is how our gastrointestinal tract looks like. From the mouth, to the esophagus, to the stomach, to the small and large intestines. The small and the large intestines, if you stretch the whole intestinal tract and measures, that's equivalent to 30 feet. Large intestine or colon, that is the last part of our intestinal tract. If you have dysbiosis, these are the symptoms of dysbiosis. Number one, bad breath. No amount of the propolis toothpaste can correct that. If despite the propolis toothpaste, you continue to smell that bad breath, it's really highly suggestive na meron kang bad bacteria, dominant. Again, if you of, often feel that kind of yung bloated, parang lagi kang may kabag. Gusto mong laging didig high, or when, even in the midst of general public, you cannot control it, you just fart. Ganon. <laughs> and then, cramps. Parang masakit na hindi maintindihan. Surprise, diarrhea. Bigla na lang sira ang dumi. Only to the following day or two, constipated naman. And irritable bowel syndrome. Irritable bowels, kada kain gusto mo. Kada kain gusto mo. Ganon. Ganon. Among my patients, I have often proven this. Sometimes somebody would come up to me with complaints of hihiyan na ho ako sa opisina namin kasi konting mag-lunch, konting mag-snacks, I have to rush to the bathroom and I have to struggle with my discomfort and the pain and all that. So it's really causing him anguish. So despite all the treatments he has received, omeprazole directed towards dyspepsia or acidity and all that, antispasmodic, nothing has really helped him. So after a very thorough medical uh, history taking and physical evaluation, my verdict, you are rich in bad bacteria. And I will challenge our probiotic to let me prove that point. In three days' time, all the symptoms were gone. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and I have a niece who is also a pediatrician at Makati Med. Yung asawa niya is a surgeon. Yung auntie ng kanyang asawa, 92 years old, for the longest time, has been suffering from irritable bowel syndrome. And nothing has ever given her comfort until she took the probiotic. 
then it became a thing of the past. The irritable bubble syndrome. <laughs> so this is what I had mentioned earlier. 90% of the 90%, you have that in your intestine. You symbiosis or what you call as the ecosystem between the good and the bad. These are the other suggestive signs that will make you suspect na baka bad bacteria ang problema. Aside from the digestive symptoms, weakened immunity. You encounter somebody na laging may sipon, laging may trangkaso, may mga allergies, may sinus congestion, or mentally laging feeling depressed, ang labong kausap. Hindi may, <laughs> although may mga taong ang labong kausap, not because of bad bacteria. <laughs> Talagang ganun, di ba? So, may senior moments, kahit bata pa, laging irritable. Or maybe naka-antibiotic or naka-anti-inflammatories. Anti-inflammatories are examples of which mga gamot sa mga rayuma, they're all anti-inflammatories. Or on birth control pills. Skin problems, may mga breakout ng acne, blemishes, dryness, psoriasis, rosacea, and eczema. If you have this, that do not resolve with the conventional treatment given by your doctor, chances are, ang problema mo, bad bacteria. And you can always challenge probiotic to do its job, to prove your point. So what can harm your intestinal flora or your gut bacteria? If you don't eat a variety of different whole foods. Yung mga whole food, ito yung hindi processed, hindi refined, uh, walang artificial additives, walang mga ganon. Whole wheat bread, for example, mga oatmeal, examples, ganon. So the more variety and the more differently colored food you eat, the more assured ka na you'll, your, your intestinal flora will be good. So lack of prebiotic in the diet. Prebiotic is different from probiotic. So prebiotic is a type of fiber that remains undigested, but the purpose of prebiotic is to help the probiotic to flourish. So it supports the probiotic. Drinking too much alcohol, antibiotic use. Again, in my practice, if I cannot avoid a situation where the patient really needs to take antibiotic, I make sure that I also add probiotic. Pro in favor of bio life. Anti against life. Antibiotic will kill not only the good, but the not only the bad, but the good bacteria as well. So I have to make sure that there is probiotic on the side to make sure that mara replenish back yung good bacteria that will be eliminated in the process of taking the antibiotic. Lack of regular physical activity. Always sitting down, sedentary, no exercise. That can destroy your gut bacteria. Cigarette smoking. Not getting enough sleep. A stressful way of living. Pag titingnan mo, ito pa rin yung mga free radicals, yung iba sa kanila. So all this can harm your intestinal flora. So how to improve gut health? If you know what can harm and you avoid them, therefore, you're able to improve your gut health. Just let me emphasize, some more examples of your prebiotic food will be bananas, onions, legumes, asparagus, oats. Mga prebiotic yun. Consume more probiotic, yogurt, kimchi. Make time for quality sleep. Avoid a stressful way of living. Eat foods rich in polyphenols. Ah, I'm excited by this. I'm a dark chocolate lover. So if you eat dark chocolate, that's a polyphenol that can help improve your gut health. Blueberries, wine, only red wine. Not the gin, not the other types of hard liquor, but only the red wine. It's rich in polyphenols. It can improve your gut health. But of course, there will always be a limitation as to how much. Green tea is also a good way of doing it. So why choose Atomy Probiotic 10? Number one, because it offers, offers us a wide variety. 13 different types of lacto, uh, probiotic, which when you take regularly, can assure you of a very good balance between your good and bad bacteria. So all this, you're looking up the 13 uh, different strains. Uh, Kung baga sa doctor, you're looking at parang they're all specialists in their own right. 
and each one of them has its own specialty. Even among kids, infants who present with infant colic, diba minsan dadating si mother, hindi makatulog, yak ng iyak, at anong gawin, pakainin, painamin, yak ng iyak, igtad ng igtad. Ah, may kabag ko yan, may infant colic. Usually how we did it before, antispasmodic, but not anymore. The solution is always probiotic, and it will help settle down the baby. Ganon. And reminder lang din as an example, who among you here have pregnant daughters or relatives or what, whoever, it's always better to give birth through natural spontaneous delivery rather than cesarean section. What has this, has this got to do with this? When a baby is born through the natural, vaginal, spontaneous delivery, it is assured that as the baby passes through the vaginal vault, it will drink all the probiotics. Hanggang sa makalabas siya. A baby who has been born by cesarean section is deprived of that. Ikalawa, di ba pag cesarean section, ini-sterilize yung buong abdominal skin, linis-linis, to make sure na mawala ang bacteria. So paglabas ang baby, dito muna inilalagay. So at least, parang ang feeling nila, para hindi exposed sa bacteria. Presently, it has been started in some hospitals that if a baby is born via cesarean section, they get an amount of the vaginal fluid pinapainom nila sa bata. And that is the first prebiotic gulp given to the baby. And perennial washings, binawas nila yung ganito ng mother. And then, ikinukus ko sa bata to simulate that passage through the natural way. So in that manner, they're assured na hindi naman totally na-deprive or 80% na-restore yung ganong klaseng advantage. So, Mixed probiotics, again, let me put it this way, a healthy gut flora that is high in friendly bacteria is essential to overall health. Siguro naman na-realize na at this point, na when you talk of bad bacteria in the intestine and its detrimental effects, you're not just talking of mga disadvantages sa intestine. Konektado yan sa buong katawan. Kasi pag ang inflammation nag-set in because of the breakdown of the intestinal barrier, lahat ng sakret from head to foot, konektado yan lahat. Kaya as, again, let me repeat, a healthy gut flora that is high in friendly bacteria is essential for overall health. Once a shay a day. And then, added to that, meron pa tayong mga apples, bananas, strawberries to make sure that the preparation becomes more acceptable. Lastly, this is the last slide. Hippocrates, the father of medicine, once said prophetically, dahil totoo talaga, 100% of all illnesses ng tao start in the intestines. Totoo yun. So we have to be very conscious and careful that we maintain that good intestinal health. The best way to do it is through probiotic. So for everybody out there who desires to be healthy, take probiotic once a day a day. So fellow Atomians, stay happy, stay well. Thank you.